we had heard about some really cool stuff that was going on with chicken feed and treats that was not just good news for chickens, but was designed to revolutionize all livestock feed with insect-based protein sourcing. The really, really cool part, it was in Seattle, a part of the country I had never been. Beta Hatch is the brainchild of Dr. Virginia Emery, whose big goal is to improve the food sourcing for livestock with insect-based feed that is sustainable, beneficial to the environment, and, in turn, improves the quality of our food chain. And as with so many things, it begins with chickens. We started with some basic bug biology so we could better understand the whole process. So we're farming mealworms. Mm -hmm. People know the mealworm, which is the larval stage of the insect. I did not know they had legs. Yes, they've got little, this is a little exaggerated, but yeah. so they can actually hang on to things. Um, and they'll actually, when they're eating, they kind of hold their food and eat it sort of like a chipmunk does, like. Seriously? Yeah, so. Do we have arms on the logo here? <laughs> yes, he does. He does. That's not quite an accurate <laughs> representation. <laughs> the, the thumbs up does not happen. <laughs> so the mealworm is the larval stage, so. They're like a, a butterfly, right? Okay. So um, the adult is a beetle as opposed to mm -hmm. a butterfly. They lay an egg and that hatches, uh, the larva hatches out um, and they grow as a larva. Um, and as they're growing, they shed their skin like a snake. Mm -hmm. So they grow up and we harvest them when they're uh, a pretty large larva, but mm -hmm. about 10% we have to turn back into breeders. So we let them go through the full metamorphosis. They have a uh, pupil stage, this is like the cocoon stage, uh, and then they become an adult again. So that's the full life cycle that we're So in, in scale here, yep. this darkling beetle is how big when it's an adult? Uh, well, you'll see some, but they're about that big. So okay. about an inch or a little less than an inch. And the egg, is that visible or does that you'll, only You'll see them? some of those too. Yep. Okay. So they're kind of like a grain of sand. Like. I, I don't think I've ever seen that. These guys look kind of like little aliens. So they're my favorite perfect. life stage. Yeah, um, they don't have some insects when they're pupa. They've got mm -hmm. like a protective shell. You can't really see them. But these guys are naked. So you can actually see all the little body parts. Oh, wow. They're pretty cool. The scale of production needed to raise and process live insects is mind-boggling to me, but not Dr. Emery. She envisions a model that relies on worm farms, from farmers like me, to produce the mealworms needed to keep up with the protein demands of our planet. At some point, you're gonna outgrow your ability to service what your potential market is. Right, is, so how do we expand capacity right. quickly? This is a way to, a distributed production mm -hmm. approach. So. so they own the facility, they operate and manage mm -hmm. it, we buy the product back from them. There's kind of two options. I think we'll get producers that want to grow their own feed mm -hmm. on site, but I think the bigger, more powerful thing is if we can buy the product back from them and offer guaranteed pricing and give them some, some good revenues that way. When we were talking about the converting traditional farms into insect farms. On the economics of it, have you, has anybody done the, the, the scale of here is what you make and here are the risks on pigs and cows and here's what you make and here are the risks on Bugs? Yeah. <laughs> well, we're the first ones trying to uh, really replicate this model. So we still have a few years to really prove that out and test it, but based on all the knowledge we have about the species, the operation, how things are working, it should make a lot of financial sense for a rancher to take mm -hmm. on insects as opposed to some of these other animals. Part of the reason is you get a much higher throughput. So What's that mean? Uh, we're using the vertical space, so you can oh, actually right. get a larger volume of production mm -hmm. out of say a barn or a converted warehouse. Um, but then also it's a different process. It's a lot cleaner, smells a lot nicer. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, the manure is not this wet, gross, fly infested thing. It's a dry product. So the whole process is just really different. Hypothetically speaking, let's say there's a small scale farmer in the Midwest, say uh -huh. 32 acres. Does that, what you're talking about, could that fit in there? Absolutely. Um, you know, we've talked to a couple interested ranchers uh, that range across the spectrum. You've got folks that own warehouses mm -hmm. looking to monetize their warehouse. You've got folks that have an old barn and they're looking to stop growing poultry. They're kind of tired of dealing with that. They want something new. Mm -hmm. um, you've got farmers that are looking for social organic fertilizer on their, on their farm. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of different um, 
people that are interested in this kind of model. Um, we're probably going to be starting out with more of a warehouse-based model because you can control a lot more of that. Mm -hmm. But the goal is to really quickly be moving into more rural communities with this kind of uh, business opportunity. How do you find those guys? How do they sign up? Could you imagine if we turn <laughs> our farm into a part of that life cycle for Chubby Mealworm? <laughs> <laughs> that we get into beta hatch and then it winds up being in the bags that feeds our chicken, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's all about connecting with customers. I think mm -hmm. people who are using insects sort of see the value, understand that there's a lot of opportunity there. Mm -hmm. um, but we're basically taking orders right now. If people want to sign up um, to get on our list to be interested in ranching, that's something that we're trying to line up for 2020. I'm in. Yeah. This initial small scale and custom engineered operation is in a converted 5,000 square foot warehouse. The equipment and processes used are being tested, confirmed, and modified for ramping up to a much larger mass production hatchery being planned and constructed nearby. So they're, all, they're called the mealworm for a reason. Um, they've been eating uh, meal for millennia. So they've actually found um, mealworms in clay pots in the Mediterranean and um, parts of the ancient world. And so they are already semi-domesticated, um, which is a big advantage. There's an industry that exists for growing for reptile food. So a lot of people who have bearded dragons or mm -hmm. other types of animals, fishing bait, those kinds of industries. There's an existing set of insect farms around the country that are producing for those markets. Um, we're the first farm producing for animal feed. So uh, specifically focusing on poultry, aquaculture, animals that are part of the food system. So that just means we have a much higher standard of production with how we grow. It's feel pretty cool to be first to that, but I also imagine it comes with a lot of risk. Yeah, for sure. It didn't take long for me to start thinking that there was maybe more to being a rancher than I thought. So everything we're doing here, this is a pre-commercial facility, so this is all to learn what we need to know for the next facility. So for example, this is a batch process where you have to sort of do everything in batches. The next facility will be moving a lot of our machinery, a lot of the equipment to a continuous process, so mm -hmm. having everything on a conveyor. All the rooms and hallways were so clean and white. It wasn't long before we had to put on lab coats so we wouldn't disrupt the worm's sterile environment. We are going to wear booties, lab coats as well mm -hmm. for our protection and for the bug's protection. And then I'll have you put on a hairnet. Oh, that just out of courtesy. Thank you. And I don't know that I actually mean. <laughs> it's a combination of keeping us safe, keeping the bugs safe, um, and keeping the product clean. So um, when you're a food processing facility, you have to be really mindful. I don't think I've worn one of these since I was about 16 working in a sandwich factory. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. I and I, I should ask Lisa about your, your beard. Oh, I'll wear a beard now. All right. And that's, you know, a lot of this is just to keep hair out of the product. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're a food processing facility, you need to be thinking about this kind of stuff. Right, right. Because um, everything you do here is food grade. Yes. Okay, so yeah. that's the difference. So what kind of things in the next day or two would Ben and I need to be aware of if we start coming down with something? There is almost no risk of you catching something from the bugs. Okay. Um, insects are so distantly related to us that, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're not even vertebrates. So they are so distantly related, there's very few things that they can carry that would affect us. Mm -hmm. We're freezing our feed to make sure there's no bugs in it, but as we get bigger, we'll probably do more of an inline treatment with heat because um, this pretty expensive to freeze stuff. Right now we're just going to grab some feed to, to load it up. Good thing I learned best by doing because Dr. Emery didn't hesitate to put Ben and me to work. We're just as much a, a farmer as anyone else growing any other kind of food. It's just that we're doing it indoors in a really controlled environment. We first saw how the organic feed is introduced in the process and actually, it's predominantly organic wheat bran, which is easy for the mealworms to digest. We saw the different production rooms and trays full of the various life stages. The insects are kept in optimal conditions with temperature and humidity controlled automatically, set to about 80 degrees Fahrenheit and 80% humidity round the clock. At the end of the rearing process, when the larvae are fully grown and in their last stage, about 10% of the worms become the lucky chosen ones that get separated and put back into the production room as part of the ongoing breeding program. They'll pupate and emerge as adults that mate and start the production cycle all over again with each female laying about 500 eggs. The other 90% of the larvae get processed and packaged for commercial product. First, 
They are placed in freezing temperatures for 24 hours and then put into a microwave oven for baking and drying. So, all right, so taste test. Well, I got the mask on, I can't. <laughs> hey! Yep. <laughs> our uh, chubby mealworms. So, these are uh, our first product that's out there, three pounds that you can get online. Um, interestingly, though, our insects are so big that we've been needing to. I have an overflow package as well. So you might get two bags. So wait, 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 explain that to me. Yeah, so we're growing a very high quality insect. Um, mm -hmm. And we can really um, push them to a much larger size when we harvest them, which means you get um, a lot more nutrition, but it also just means you get a bigger insect, but they don't fit in the bag as well. So the bags that are made for three pounds of mealworms don't fit three pounds of American-made mealworms. That's right, yeah, I think it was just a couple of weeks ago where you know, I got emails and saying, oh, there's a slight problem here, but it's a, a good problem to have. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, it speaks to the quality. Exactly, yeah, Virginia had some, some spare bags here, so uh, our three pounds are currently going out in a two and a half pound and a half pound bag. So, so, so you, can, you can get one for your friend, basically. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So to watch episodes on the go, be sure to download the Coop Dreams app. And for even more fun, like Coop Dreams on Facebook, Follow us on Instagram and Twitter, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and visit our website at www.coopdreams.tv.